Good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. As we begin, let us open with a time of personal confession. Isaiah one eighteen says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Take the next few moments to pray in silence, confessing your sins before God. After a couple of minutes, I will pray for us and we will continue. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you search the heart and mind. Before a word is on our tongue, you know it. You know our inner thoughts. You know the things that we hide from others. Therefore, we humbly confess our sin to you. And though we have done nothing to deserve it, you promise to cleanse us so that we may stand in your presence. So we ask that you would forgive us for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy and compassion on us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John 1, 7 to 9 says this. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his son, Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For those who confess their sin and trust in Jesus, God promises that the blood of Jesus has washed away your sin. He no longer keeps a record of your sin. You have been joined to Christ, therefore God sees you as washed and cleansed. Let 
Uh, let us stand and sing together the hymn Amazing Grace. As you are able, please remain standing for the reading of God's word. Tonight we have two short texts, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. Our first reading is from Genesis 3, 8 to 13. This is the word of God. This is the word. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I have commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you, whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate.
Our second reading is from John chapter 18, verses 1 through 9. This is the word of God. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place where Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Maybe seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to hear your voice. Open our hearts and minds to your word. And help us to see the glory and love of your son, Jesus Christ. We ask this in his name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. On Good Friday, we remember the crucifixion and death of the Lord Jesus Christ. But to fully understand the meaning of Good Friday, we must go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible. Back to the story of the first man, Adam. Genesis tells us of how God created Adam out of the dust and placed him in a garden. God commanded Adam to cultivate this garden and to guard it. He gave Adam all the fruit of the garden to eat. All except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And last of all, God gave Adam a wife, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. 
太太，就是他骨中之骨，肉中之肉。Together, the man and woman were called to be fruitful and multiply, to fill the earth with the image of God. But instead of fulfilling the mission as God intended, Adam and Eve rebelled. Eve was deceived by the serpent, and she ate. Eve was deceived by the serpent, and she ate. Eve was deceived by the serpent, and she ate. Eve was deceived by the serpent, and she ate. Eve was deceived by the serpent, and she ate. Eve was deceived by the serpent, and she ate. Eve was deceived by the serpent. That if he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he would surely die. Now Adam and Eve did not die immediately in a physical sense. God was merciful. Yet on that day they did die spiritually. Uh, we see this in the text that we read from Genesis. Genesis 3 it says that when Adam and Eve heard God walking in the garden, they hid from him. It was not God who first cast man out of the garden. It was man who first tried to hide from God. Sin destroys our fellowship with our Creator. Instead of seeking out the God who had given them everything. Adam and Eve drove themselves into hiding. They cut themselves off from the God who is light and life. Of course, Adam could not hide his sin from God. When God confronted him about it, Adam tried to blame someone else. He said, "The wife you gave me. She gave the fruit to me, and I ate." And notice, Adam didn't just blame Eve for giving him the fruit. He even blamed God for giving him Eve. Imagine how Eve must have felt. Adam was her husband. He was her head. He had once called her his own flesh, but now she was the problem that God had put into his life. Perhaps Eve felt abandoned. Perhaps she felt betrayed. But Eve was not blameless either. Instead of listening to the word of God, she had chosen to obey the words of a serpent. Instead of serving the Creator, Eve served the creature. She did not listen to the word of God. 
Like Adam, Eve also did not take responsibility for her sin. Instead, instead, she blamed it on her circumstances. It was the serpent. It was the serpent who deceived me and I ate. This pattern of disobedience, shame, and blaming others is a pattern that we can all recognize in our own selves. Adam was our first father, and we have all inherited his sin. When he fell, we all fell. Romans 5 12 says, Sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin. Now, some may say, it isn't fair that Adam represented me in the garden. If I were there, perhaps I would not have eaten of the fruit. But in fact, all of us sin just like Adam and Eve. Like Eve, we serve the creature rather than the creator. We are idolaters. Like Adam, we serve our own lusts and sinful desires and then blame it on others. It's my wife's fault, you say. Or it's my children's fault that I'm so angry. Or if only my husband were not so stubborn, I would not be so bitter. Our sins show us that Adam represented us well in the garden. If we were there, we would have sinned just like him. It is for this reason that Jesus has come. In Adam, we all fell into sin and death. Jesus came to do what the first man, Adam, had failed to do. Jesus came to take our place so that in him we might be made alive. We see this in John chapter 18. Uh, verse 1 tells, tells us that after the Last Supper, Jesus took his disciples to a garden. Jesus knew that Satan had entered Judas. And that Judas was coming with a band of soldiers to arrest him. But when the mob arrived, Jesus did not hide. Jesus did not try to escape. In fact, verse 4 says that Jesus, knowing what would happen, stepped forward and asked, Whom do you seek? And when they say they are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus responds simply, I am he. 
，找拿撒勒人耶稣，耶稣他的回答说：“我就是。” Or actually, even more literally, Jesus just says, "I am." 照着原文来说，耶稣说：“我是。” Here we hear echoes of God's own divine name, "I am who I am." 我们这里就听到耶稣他自己圣洁的名字的一个回响。These words caused the mob to draw back and fall to the ground. These words caused the mob to draw back and fall to the ground. You see, they have come to arrest Jesus, but Jesus remains in control. They come to arrest Jesus, but Jesus remains in control. They come to arrest Jesus, but Jesus remains in control. They come to arrest Jesus, but Jesus remains in control. The point is not that Jesus has finally been captured. No, the point is that even now Jesus is still king. And even his enemies must still serve him. You see, Jesus willingly gave himself up. As Jesus says elsewhere, I lay down my life that I may take it up again. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. Notice the contrast between Jesus and Adam. Instead of guarding his wife from the serpent, Adam took the fruit from Eve and ate. Then, when God asked about his sin, Adam said that it was Eve who gave him the fruit first. And he said this, fully knowing that the penalty for sin was death. But consider Jesus. In the garden, Jesus gave himself up so that his disciples could go free. Verse 8, Jesus said, if you seek me, let these men go. And John eighteen nine says, "This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one." This was not written for the disciples only. This was written for all who would belong to Christ. When Jesus gave Himself up in the garden, it was not just for the disciples. It was for all who would trust in Him. Because Jesus offered Himself, you and I can be free from our sin. Free from our guilt, and ultimately free from the curse of death. Jesus, he put himself down, we can be free from our sin, from our guilt, and from the curse of death. Jesus, he put himself down, we can be free from our sin, from our guilt, and from the curse of death. Jesus, he put himself down, we can be free from our sin, from our guilt, and from the curse of death. Jesus, he put himself down, we can be free from our sin, from our guilt, and from the curse of death. Jesus, he put himself down, we can be free from our sin, from our guilt, and from the curse of death. Jesus, he put himself down, we can be Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, "Cursed is everyone hanged on a tree." Jesus was not guilty of sin, but he took responsibility for our sin and died in our place. Adam ate from the tree and brought the curse of death on us. Adam 
，那这树上的果子，而将死亡带到我们的身上。By dying on a tree, Jesus took our curse upon himself. 耶稣呢，他死在木头上，死在树上，他将咒诅带到他的身上。This is why the Bible calls Jesus the last Adam. Where Adam disobeyed, Jesus obeyed. Where Adam brought death, Jesus brings life. The first Adam blamed his bride. The last Adam gave his life for his bride. As Ephesians says, Jesus loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that she might be holy and without blemish. Mankind fell in a garden at a tree. So also Jesus gave himself up in a garden and was crucified on a tree. Because he has done this, we are redeemed. All of us have sinned like Adam. There is no one who does not sin. And all of us try to deal with our sin in various ways. Some of us try to hide our sin. We hide it by lying. Or by creating our own self righteousness, or even by doing good works or serving at church, some of us try to deal with sin by evading responsibility. We blame others, maybe our spouse or our children. We blame our circumstances, maybe our work or our school. We may even blame God Himself. But however we try to get away from sin, there is no human way of salvation. Hiding sin won't work. Blaming it on others won't work. Trying to use good works to cover it up won't work. The only hope is to look to Jesus crucified on the cross. There, all your sin, all your excuses, all your, all your bitterness, pride, envy, and selfish desires. All of this was crucified and put to death with him. Although Jesus was sinless, he took your sin and put it to death with him on the cross. And when he rose again, your sin did not rise with him. Your sins are still in the grave. So come to Christ. He will not reject you. 
he will not turn you away. He will not blame you. He bore our sin on the cross and became a curse so that we might become his righteousness. He gave himself up in the garden so that we could be free. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that where Adam fell, Jesus stood firm. We thank you that where we are faithless, Jesus is faithful. Help us to see the love of Christ for his church. That while we were still sinners, he died to make us his own. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand and sing this hymn together. Give us faith to see Christ crucified. Give us trust to believe that on the cross, Jesus took away all our sin, guilt, and shame. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
but we'll be taking up the bread first. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take up the bread together. In the same way also, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take the cup together. In response to all that God has said and done through the Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer as he taught us. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Kingdom Let's stand and sing the doxology together. Praise be to the Lord, Praise Receive now the benediction which comes from Jude 24 to 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority. Before all time and now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a good evening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.